Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2021 Sales Wrap Kickoff. My name is Sophie Goodman. I am the North Shore Sales Manager, and I'm so fired up to be here. Okay, so today I'm just going to be talking about how to have hundreds of names and also how to team build. So let's get started. Awesome. Okay, great. So I'm really fired up to be here. I'm really excited. So thank you guys. So when I was asked to give this message, I was not only so excited, but I also just didn't really know where to start. So I thought there's no better way than to start from the very beginning. So I started working for Cutco in the summer of 2019, right after I'd graduated from Deerfield High School. I had gotten a text from the one and only Colton Horn, who I'd known forever, just saying he had this great work opportunity in an entry level customer sales and service position. I was like, cool. He thought of me. This is sick. I love talking to people. So I went in for the interview and I got the job. I was so fired up. I don't even know how to cook, but I was like, let's go play. Let's go sell some knives. So I went home later that day and I told my parents that I got this great new job working with Cutco selling knives. And to say the least, my parents were not too excited. They had grown up in the North Shore their whole lives. They've gotten a lot of calls from Cutco reps. And they told me beforehand that they were not going to be helpful and they were not going to give me any names. So me being the ambitious, prove you wrong type of girl was like, okay, let's take this challenge. So now I'm still here. So yeah, so I walked into day two of training and everyone else in my training class had already come with hundreds of names that their parents gave them. I was the only one that was fending for myself. So Colton and I sat down in training and we started to build up my initial names list. So we started to think of my initial names list in groups. The first group we came up with was family. This meant immediate family. This meant extended family. This meant my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, my grandparents. And then we got into the olds. So that was all my old coaches, my old teachers from preschool, elementary school, middle school, high school, college professors, my old bosses, the families I used to babysit for, my campers' parents. Then we got into the group with my therapist, my school social workers, any old principals, anyone that I'd known from any sort of religious affiliation. So for me, that meant my temple. Then from the country club I used to work at. Then we got into my friends' parents, my neighbors, all of my doctors, so my pediatrician, my dermatologist, even my gynecologist, my dentist, my oral surgeon, the person who cuts my hair, my family friends, my siblings' friends' parents, my cousins' friends' parents, my old coworkers' parents. So by the time we went through this list, what I thought started at zero quickly shifted to 250 names. So not only did I know more people than I thought I did, but I just thought of everyone who's over the age of 30, who owned a home, and who had a job. So 10 days later, I completed 44 appointments, I had 42 sales, and I sold $10,027. But the best part was I added an extra 400 names. So not only did I know more people than I thought I did, but I also learned that it was kind of impossible not to have hundreds of names at all times. So step one is exhaust all of your resources. And step two is get really good at recommendations. So getting good at recs is actually really simple. The first thing you have to do is just memorize the rec approach. We don't ask you to memorize the whole demo, but memorize the rec approach. You should be able to do the rec approach in your sleep. And that's because when you have it memorized, you can have eye contact. Eye contact establishes trust and trust equals more referrals. So rapport plus certainty equals influence. So if you walk out with anything today, memorize the rec approach. The second thing is to ask with confidence when asking for recs. So Danny Lewis always puts it best, but if you're gonna ask someone on a date and you ask super wimpy like, hi, will you go out with me? What are they going to say? No, right? So ask with confidence. Hey, will you go out with me? Yeah, right? So ask with confidence, ask with enthusiasm. And don't take no for an answer. 
And the last thing is just to give thought joggers. So I know we just played that quick game over there on how to build your initial list. So play that game with your customers. Turn it into a game. It makes it more fun for everyone involved. So here are some of the thought joggers that I like to use. Hey, Mrs. Jones, what about your neighbors? Everyone has neighbors. So ask for them. Who do you know who graduated from Miami of Ohio? So who do you know who graduated from any school that you go to? That's instant rapport right there. People like people who are like them. Who's the most influential person you know? That's who do you know who knows the most people? That's how I got referred to the mayor of Deerfield. Who do you know with young children? Who do you know who could buy anything in the catalog if they wanted to? You don't get what you don't ask for. Those are your top prospect customers. Who do you know in California? Who do you know in Colorado? Who do you know in Wyoming? Ask specific questions and they'll think of specific people. What about your kids' friends' parents? What about your family, your siblings, your parents, your sister-in-law? Who do you know who's whatever dream job you want? That's really good for networking, but it's also really good for rapport. So a couple of other quick rec plugs is one, have a power intro. Everyone take a picture of the screen. So a power intro could sound something like this. Hey, Mrs. Jones, my goal for this winter break is to sell $10,000 and I'm currently at two. So if you just wanna put the rest on your credit card right now, that's totally fine. No, I'm just kidding. But the way I can hit my goal is if I see 40 more people and the way I see more people is through a friend of a friend, like a referral. So at the end of every appointment, I ask every person I see if they might know anyone who'd be willing to see my demo. But we'll talk about that later. Does that sound okay? Having a power intro is huge because not only do you plant that seed early in your customer's head, but then they think about it throughout that by the end of the demo, when you ask for Rex, they're not surprised. They know it's coming. So implement the power intro. Couple more quick plugs is social proof. Sounds something like this. Hey, Samuel, I know you got my name through Danny Lewis. And along with your name, Danny also gave me 14 of his nicest friends. If Samuel sees that Danny does that, it becomes more normal. Normalize it. Establish that extra layer of credibility. Another thing is re-remind them what it means to become a sponsor. Hey, Mrs. Jones, for every 10 names, you become one sponsor. And for every 20, you become a double sponsor. And once I get 50 sponsors, I get a free piece of Cutco that I get to raffle off as a way to my sponsors to say thank you to those who have helped me out the most. So Mrs. Jones, what piece would you be most excited to get? And then write down that piece. There is an incentive that's locking them into being a sponsor. A couple more quick phrases. Anyone in North Shore has heard me do this one before, but Danny gave me 10 names and now he's like, Sophie, I'm done. I gave you 10. Hey, Danny, can you think of just one more, please? No, Sophie, I already gave you 10. Danny, I'm not asking for a lot, just one more. That's the easiest way to get just one more. And that one more could be a potential homemaker. So ask, then just remind them, this is actually the only reason I have a job. And it's the only reason I'm gonna to continue to have a job. So this really means a lot to me. And then thank them a hundred times because you are employed because of them. So thank them. So getting Rex is definitely one way to keep your names list growing, but there are other ways too. So the next thing I wanna talk about is how to get creative. So what does getting creative look like? It can look like anything. So pre-pandemic, what I did was I decided that people are better off with Cutco. So why not talk about it wherever I go and to whoever I see? So in this case, I brought my blue book with me to the Cubs game. I went from person to person to person and just showed them our catalog. What do you know? I sold $1,500 at the Cubs game. So talk about Cutco wherever you go to whoever you see, because people are better off with Cutco. Another thing I did was during my SC2 push, I was kind of in a little bit of a block and I didn't know what to do. So I was listening to the Changing Lives Selling Knives podcast, specifically Brandon Brown's. And in his podcast, he said, in order to think big, you have to think outside the box. 
So as I'm driving home from work, I'm like, how do I think outside the box, outside the box, inside the box, mailbox? And then it came to me. So I made a flyer, just like the one here. I printed out a hundred copies and I put them in all of my neighbor's mailboxes. It gets the word out, it gets your name out. Some other ways to be creative, not only to talk about it wherever you go, but mid dentist appointment, you got tools in your mouth, ask for the demo. Your dentists are great customers, I can assure you. I asked for the demo, mid dentist appointment, and what do you know, he bought a cookware set. Another thing that I did, which helped me out the most, was I talked, texted all of my cousins and my siblings, and I gave them a little incentive. I said, hey, Julia, for every name you give me, I'll Venmo you $1. That $20 investment that I paid to my cousin Julia resulted in 5,000 CPO in one week. The best $20 I've ever spent. So ask. Another thing I wanna talk about is your past customers. Your past customers are unbelievable resources. They want to help you. They know your goals. So share them, right? So call all of your past customers. And the reason I say to call and not text is because with effective communication, only 7% of communication comes from the words that we use, like texting. 38% comes from the quality and the tone of your voice. So it's how you say what you say. And 55% comes from your body language. And that's why being on Zoom and video is the most effective because it checks off all of these categories. So what does a past customer script look like? Looks like this. Hey, Mrs. Jones, I hope you're doing well and enjoying your Cutco. I was just wondering if you thought of any more people who'd be nice enough to listen to my presentation. Again, they don't have to buy anything because as a reminder, I do get paid just to show it. So just nice people like you who'd be willing to take a look. This is the only reason I have a job. So even just one name would be super helpful. So who's the per first person you can think of? Call all of your past customers. I just did this this break and I ended up with 50 new names from three of my past customers. Call your past customers. <clears throat> the next thing I wanna to touch on is just your social media presence. We live in a world where everything is connected via social media. This is huge. So use your Instagram, use your Facebook, use your Snapchat, your LinkedIn, your YouTube, your Twitter as networking. Everyone has social media. So you might as well take advantage of that. You can be connected with people all over the world. So here are some examples of some social posts. This one from our one and only Mike Muriel posting for Sophia, right? She just started this great new job. DM me if you wanna hear more. It could look like this, sharing your goals with all of your friends and family, and then they'll repost it. So post on social media. The next thing that I want to talk about is your chicken list. So whether we like to admit it or not, we all have those people that were just too chicken to call. Whether that's your family friend you haven't talked to in 10 years or your distant cousins, we all have those people. So the biggest lesson that I learned is if you don't call your chicken list, someone else will. Samuel Paulsner took half of my old teachers because I was too scared to call them. And what's the worst someone can say? No. So call your chicken list. I went my entire first summer avoiding my chicken list. My second summer came around and Brian Fitzgerald had said, Sophie, if you don't call your chicken list, someone else will. So what do you know? I called Lisa Aronson. On the phone, Lisa had said to me, Sophie, I've never let a Cutco wrap inside my house and I'm not interested in buying anything. Hey, Lisa, good thing it's completely virtual and I don't even have to come over and you don't have to buy anything. Okay, great. So what do you know? My first signature set later, Brian said, I told you so. So call your chicken list or someone else will. Another one, Audrey McVicker just called Rocky Wirtz, the owner of the Blackhawks. She was so nervous to call him. And what did he get? A homemaker and three sets of cutting boards. Call your chicken list before someone else does. So in summary, exhaust your resources, get really good at recommendations, be creative, call your past customers, use your social media platforms, 
and don't be a chicken. The next thing I'm just gonna touch on is team building. This is my favorite part of the job. This is why I'm still here because I get to work with all of my best friends. Kaylee Cooperman, I've known her since birth. Our mom studied abroad together. Lucy Siegel and Chloe Baskis, two of my best friends from overnight camp. Alex Fufus and Sophia Muriel, I go to college with. I love these people. They make work more fun. And what's great is the All-American Scholarship for reps. Now we have for reps and assistant managers for team building. This is epic. So yes, it's really cool to see your name on your report. You can also win a, scho a scholarship for college. That's so cool. So why team build? It's simple. Not only are we in a global pandemic, so what other jobs are hiring, but it's so much more fun to work with your friends. It promotes the office culture. It makes the environment so much better. And it just makes work a way more fun place. And statistically, PRs do produce the most CPO. So if I had a 10K fast start, 90% of the people that I referred to this job also had 10K fast starts. And yeah, seeing your name on the report is kind of sick. So having some concerns for team building is 100% normal. Things like, I don't wanna lose any friends. They think it's stupid. They've already been asked before. It makes sense that you're gonna have concerns, but just like we talked about, what's the worst someone can say? No, and they're not saying no to you. They're saying no to the job. So yeah, we talk about Cutco with whoever we see. We also wanna give everyone the opportunity that we've all been fortunate enough to have. So when they say no, just kill them with kindness. Casey Fry, she's someone who I tried to recruit four different times. Every time, it wasn't the right timing. This winter break, Casey got reached out to by one of our SMRAs, Orly, and Casey was like, perfect timing. Casey's right now on day nine of her fast start at $11,000. So maybe it's not the right time for someone. That's why we keep reaching out. So my experience with team building, yes, it was really cool that I was the number one team builder in the region and the number four in the company, but that's not why I love it. I love it because I got texts like this and texts like that and like this and like that and like that. So overall, it feels really good to change someone's life. You'd be silly if you didn't talk about Cutco wherever you went and to whoever you went. People deserve the same opportunity that you guys all have. So overall, I love Cutco. I love all of you. I hope you guys got some good nuggets out of this and enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you.